Okay, okay. Like I mentioned in my intro, Windaria is a tough movie for me to talk about. I frankly really didn't like it when I watched it, but after talking about it online on the Discord, I could see its appeal, which led me to think about why I didn't like it. My feelings on this movie are summed up by the scene in which Princess Ahanas and Prince Jill meet for the final time, and after some admittedly melodramatic conversation between them, she stabs him. Her stabbing of him was a perfect moment, as far as I'm concerned. The movie had built carefully to that point, showing us their love for each other, but also the national demands on their shoulders. It was a tragic, heartbreaking action for her to take, but it was also clearly motivated by the needs of her people. Then she immediately killed herself. Now, here's the thing. Lovers have been committing suicide together for a long, long time in Japanese storytelling. It's basically a cliche at this point. True love transcends this life, and so we will die together that we may meet again in the hereafter and all that. I get it. But remember, she killed the prince because his war was threatening the life of her people. But her job isn't over. Killing the prince wouldn't immediately end the war, quite clearly. Killing herself in this moment denies the very people she's trying to serve the leader that they need right now to finish off this war and live in peace. It completely contradicts the motivation for her previous action. Indeed, the whole movie feels like characters doing things because that's what needs to happen at the plot at that point, not because it's been properly motivated or explained for their particular characters at the time. For example, Isu goes to the urban mountain kingdom and apparently turns into a cold stone mercenary and completely forgets his wife in what appears to be a couple of days. Now, I do think in retrospect that there was a longer time jump there, but I certainly did not get that impression while watching it, and I was watching it pretty closely. And afterwards, he's clearly pursuing pleasures of the flesh, having completely forgotten about the whole life he left behind. Indeed, the ending perfectly symbolizes my problems with this film. The very beginning of the film establishes that when people in this world die, their souls take the shape of red energy birds and fly up to that weird airship. By the way, neat little world-building idea there. Very fantastical. I, I really liked how strange that was. So when Isu comes home at the end and sees his wife there, discovering that she's actually a ghost contradicts what the movie established at the beginning. She's a ghost, kind of, because that makes the moment tragic, not because that's been woven into the movie. To be clear, I do not want a movie to explain everything to me. I don't need to know why there's an airship of the dead or how it works. But when you spring a completely new element of your world on me during your climax, just to make a moment more melodramatic, that's not clever writing, that's a certain level of deception. And that's what's so frustrating about Windaria. It feels like there's an amazing fantasy film in there, but it's just so intent on having classic plot twist number eight and classic tragic moment number 12 without weaving those into a clearly established and clearly motivated whole that I just couldn't take it seriously, which is a shame because there's some beautiful animation in here and some really neat world building. But hey, it's interesting, and I've been talking about it for minutes now, so clearly it's not a waste of film by any stretch. It's just frustrating.